everybody, it's Brian. Welcome to the 33rd Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about something called a drop down button. And I looked in the widget catalog and all through here and I could not find what I was looking for. I had a simple user feedback saying, hey, where's the combo box? And I dug through this whole thing, I couldn't find it. If you're wondering what a combo box is, it's just simply a little box or a button that you can click a down arrow and it gives you a list of items to choose from. And I could not find that anywhere. It actually exists, even though I couldn't find it out in their documentation. We're going to work with it today and see how it works. Um, it's been a little temperamental for me. This is the third time doing this tutorial, and I'm a little fluttered with flust flustered with flutter right now. <laughs> but uh, it may actually be something I'm doing wrong, not flutter itself. Um, also, big disclaimer, it's way past when I should have eaten, and I've got... A slow cooker full of food downstairs then I can smell it all the way up here and it smells just amazing and I'm starving so hopefully this will actually work this time otherwise I'm just going to like set this video aside and go eat all right so we're gonna just do our boilerplate code here All right, so let's do this. Hmm, run app. Yeah, told you I was hungry. New material app, here we go. All right, I'm having nothing but problems here. All right, there we go. Create the state here. And now in the state, we're going to actually do a little bit of work here. So we've got our main, we've got our my app. Now in the state, what we need to do is actually not just define what we're going to build, but we also need to initialize a few things too. So we're going to say string value equal null. And then we're going to say list string values equal new list of the type string. 2016 I gotta start using the shorter method of doing that anyways then we're just gonna hit control O on the keyboard and we are going to go to init state and we're gonna override this now what init state does is it says hey when this is loading up we want to initialize the state so let's actually initialize this we're gonna say values dot and all and from here we're going to actually add all those items in there and then our value is going to be values dot element at and we're going to give it the zero position why not probably makes sense if that was also a private variable here there we go so now we are initializing the state, and no state is complete without the build function, but we're not there yet. We want to actually um, do a void on changed string value. We're going to, you guessed it, set the state here. That way, when we get to the control, which we're going to get to here in a second, and we do the on change, we can just plug it right in there, and it just magically works. Now we're going to say widget build build context, 
and we are going to return a new scaffold. Man, dinner is smelling really good, and I'm getting really hungry here. I don't know if you guys can hear my stomach growling, but it's almost comical. All right, so at bar, new text. Oops, no, we don't want new text. We want new at bar. Then in there, we'll say title. And drop down button demo. Longest title ever. All right, so in the body, we want a new container. Padding, new edge inset all. We're going to say 32.0 because that's what we've been using for all of these. Child, we'll say new column. And new children. Whoops, not two children. And the children property, sorry. There we go. Whew, that's a lot of typing. Fingertips actually get a little numb when I type that much. All right, so in here now, we're going to make the magic actually happen. We're going to say new drop down button. Notice how it wants a list of items and it wants the on change. So let's break this down a little bit. So the on change is pretty easy to work with. We're just going to add in what we had before. And we're going to say on changed. That way it'll plug right in and set our state. Now items, this is where it gets a little bit different here. We want to take the values and we want to map them. You notice how it's saying uh, string and then it's to a function basically. So what we got to do here is we're going to say map and there's our little indicator that that's a function. And we're going to say to list down here. And in here we want to say string value. So if you're not completely sure what's going on here, we're saying values, which is just a list of strings here. And we're going to map. And what map does is it goes through every single item in that list and performs a function on it. And that function is going to be right here. And then we're converting that map back into a list. So we're going to say return new drop down menu item. So yep, that's exactly what we're doing is we're just making a list of drop down menu items. And this is suddenly complaining about something here. Let's see here. Could not print it, blah, 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 type T. All right, so let's say value. All right, so we have our drop down menu item here. And we are just going to work with this a little bit. So our value here would be, of course, the value. And the child would be a, we're going to do a new row here, just to show that even in the individual items, you can actually do some pretty complex things here. Children is going to be a, a list of widgets. And we're going to say new icon. Icons.home. New text. And we are going to just format this. We're going to say person is now we'll say person here we go value if you're wondering where value is coming from it's actually coming from right here it's coming from our map function so each item in that list is going to be a variable called value which is going to get shoved down into this function and then in this function basically what we're doing is we're saying make a new drop down menu item and add in a value add in a row in that row we have an icon and then the actual text all right so we have no issues that we can see let's go ahead and fire this up see if this thing works now the few other tutorials that i did with this um, 
I, I actually got to this point, I would build it, run it, and it just would not work on the device. It would spew out some horrendous error message, and I'd have to figure out what's going on. And I would verify, you know, the code, what I wrote versus the code in my notes, because what I do is I'll actually write the tutorial on another uh, OS. I actually write it on a Mac. And then when I record the videos, I actually come to Linux and I type all this out that you're seeing now. But it appears this time it has worked. So I'm going to guess it's just something that I had been fat fingering. But uh, here is our drop down list in all of its glory. And you notice how you have an icon, you have the formatted text of person equals. Now, some of you are probably wondering what happens if you don't set the state. Well, you'll still see the drop down, but when you click, it never changes. So it would just get stuck at whatever the value was. So that's all for this tutorial. Pretty simple, pretty easy to work with. It's actually kind of fun to keep clicking. Um, some little caveats I would note is that uh, on some phones, if you have a huge list, it won't scale correctly and it won't scroll. So if you have like a gigantic list, you should use something called a list view, which is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. That's all. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're so inclined, you can go to my website, voidrums.com, grab the source. It's out in tutorials. It's actually out on GitHub. And join the Voidrums Facebook group. We have 1,700 other programmers out there that can definitely help you with whatever questions you have. Thanks for watching.